and he explains that Shabbos is the root of the Emuna. Shabbos, wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is the Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. Shalom to everyone. Mirz Hashem, I would like to share with you some ideas of what Leila Seder represents and what is very unique about Leila Seder and what does it have to do with this Shabbos coming up that is called Shabbos Agadu. We'll start off with a couple of questions. Question number one, we know that there is a reoccurring theme in Pesach that has to do with the word Shmira, to safe keep. We know, first of all, this night of Leila Seder is called Leil Shimurim, a night of protection. We also know that we're commanded in the Torah many times about Lishmo, Veshamartem es Havoida Azois, Veshamartem et Adavarazeh, and Chagamatsois Tishmo, keep this Chagamatsois, and so on and so on it goes. And the question is, what is so unique about Pesach? that we have this reoccurring theme of make sure you keep it. I mean, we have to keep all the mitzvahs. So what is this theme in Pesach about Shmuel? The Meshech Ochma points out that there's another place that we are commanded to keep. And that is, for those of you who guessed already, Shabbos. It says several times. In fact, it says 12 times. Et Shabtu Taiti Shmoiru. And then another parsha it says, Et Shabtu Taiti Shmoiru, etc., etc. So you see that also Shabbos has this unique theme of Shmira, that we're commanded to Lishmor et HaShabbat. So what does that mean? And why is it so intrinsic, both in Shabbos and Pesach? Which already alludes to part of the answer that there's a tightly coupled a connection between Shabbos and Pesach. And that connection, the Torah hints to us in another place, where it says we're commanded to it says that we should start counting from the day after. It doesn't say Pesach. It doesn't say Yom Tov. It says Shabbos. But we know that it's not really Shabbos. Okay, but we explain it's a day that we're shoivis, which means it's a day that we don't do melacha. But still, why are you calling it Shabbos? Elamai, we see that there's a very tightly coupled relationship between Pesach and Shabbos, and it seems like it has to do with this idea of Shmira, and that's what we want to try to understand. We'll add one more question, which is very related to us, this upcoming Shabbos, Shabbos Agadol. Why is it called Shabbos Agadol? So we know because during the year they left Mitzayim, four days before Yudalid, which was Yud Nisan, on the 10th of Nisan, HaKadosh Baruch who commanded us to take the taleh, the sheep that we're going to use for Korban Pesach, and tie it to our beds. And the Mitzrim all came, the Egyptians, and they said, what is this? And we explained to them, we're taking this and we're shechting it, we're going to kill it, shecht it, and use it as a sacrifice to, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And they were all dumbstruck because that was their God. And they said, what are you doing? And they wanted to do something, but it was the b- biggest miracle, that's why it's called Big Gadol, they couldn't do anything about it. And that, we're commemorating that miracle. Just to add to the extremity of the miracle, we know that the Sar of Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim were with the Mazal of Taleh, and that Mazal was in Chodesh Nisan, and this, that maz, every Mazal of each month reaches its peak, smack in the middle of the month, which was around that time. Yudal ben Nisan is going to be smack in the middle of the month. And hence, you see the extremity of the miracle that happened there. So to commemorate that, we call it Shabbos Agadu. The question begs itself that most years it's not on Yud Bichlal. It's not on the 10th of Nisan. Every other date that we commemorate, we do it based on the dates, like Chanukah, Purim, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. There's something specific about that date. Here, we move it over to Shabbos. The Shabbos before Pesach, what is this? Where is it coming from? So there's several answers to this question. It's a known question. But we're going to try to go with the idea of Shabbos and Pesach are very intrinsically connected and that is the point we're going to try to bring about. So the Chafetz Chaim in the Zakdama to the Mishnah Bura, he talks about the importance of Zohor Es Yom HaShabbos, Sheish Es Yamim, etc. etc. And he explains that Shabbos is the root of the Emunah. Shabbos 
the mitzvah, the mitzvahs of Shabbos, Kamer and Shabbos, that our Kodesh Buch created the world in six days and then rested, that is internalizing the idea of Emunah that our Kodesh Buch created the world. And that is basic. And therefore, he quotes many chazals that say, a person that keeps Shabbos, it's from a certain perspective, as if he kept all the Torah Kula, and vice versa, chas a person that doesn't keep Shabbos, it's like, it's like he goes against all the mitzvahs. Why? Because it's the foundation, the infrastructure, that HaKadosh Buch who created the world. This is the idea of emuna being the infrastructure for Yiddishkeit. emuna believing in HaKadosh Buch Hu. Where do we see this? The Gemara in Makois, which we quoted in the past. Makois, Daf Kaf Dalet, it says, Bacha Bakuk, and he summarized all the mitzvahs in one. Ve'emida malachat, she'neemar tzadik be'emunaso yichye. A tzadik is someone that lives with his emuna. The whole infrastructure of believing in Hashem, that is what gives you the engine to do all the mitzvahs appropriately. And perhaps the idea of yichye, he'll live, we're all living in this world. Elamai, he has true life. True life is spiritual life. That is the life that's going to stay forever. As we know, Rishayim, wicked people, even in this world that they're living, they're still called dead because what are they doing? What are they doing? They're wasting their time. They're just living here like animals. To that, I want to just mention in brackets that in Lash Kodesh, I think even in the Hebrew language today, there isn't such an co- idea of killing time. Killing time is such a goyish yesoid because we believe time is here for a reason. We have time to do things, to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to do mitzvahs and chesed. And for someone to say, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do between this and this, let's just kill time. That's a horrible thing. You don't have that because it's, it's, it's mamash shekel. This is the deepness of understanding why breaking Shabbos is so horrible and why keeping Lishmor es HaShabbos is so huge. Ad kedekach, that the Chavetz Chaim said, that the Torah repeats this idea on Shabbos 12 times. So too, we can extrapolate this idea to Pesach. Pesach, if you look in the Chinuch and others, they explain that that is the reason we have Leila Seder, to be able to speak about all the miracles that happen in Mitzrayim, and that will enable us to anchor it in our hearts and deepen it into our hearts more and more. Chazal tell us that the, the, the more emuna a person has, the bigger of a tzaddik he is, because that connects you to the mitzvahs more, gives you more motivation, and that is what we're trying to achieve on, in, on Pesach, to ingrain it into our hearts. Pesach is complementary to Shabbos, because they both have this shoyish, this root of emuna. Shabbos is the root of Emunah that Hashem created the world. But as the Ramban tells us, there were many people out there that believed that Hashem created the world. But their Avoida Zohar, their Apikosus was in the idea that Hashem just let the world run on its own. And Pesach, Leila Seder specifically comes to offset that idea. And it's not true. Hashem, there's Ashkacha Pratit. And HaKadosh Buch is always down here in the world. And that's what the Ten Makos represented. And Hashem is always here and we have Ashgacha Pratit and it's not just Hashem created the world and left and let it go on autopilot. Chaz v'shal. And therefore in Pesach we have to concentrate on this idea. And that's why it says Kol HaMesaper Harizim Meshubach because the more we speak out everything, the more it's ingrained in our hearts because we said already a couple years ago the more we use crops, Matzah Zoy, Maroze, etc., etc., it is a way to ingrain it into our hearts. It's not enough to have it in our mind. It has to be in our hearts. And when we have it ingrained in our hearts, we connect more to Emunah, we become bigger tzaddikim. And that's why we have to tap into that spiritual koach Hashem put on Pesach, specifically Leila Seder, Seder night, and pass over the torch of Emunah, ingrain it more in ourselves, but also give it over to our kids. In the Goisha world, if you have a holiday, okay, so last year was the same as this year, is the same as next year. It's just a nice traditional thing to do. But by Yiddishkeit, it's way more than that. Every holiday, ha- we tap into the spiritual powers that Kaddish Buch who came, gave, gave to that day. And on Pesach, it's this idea of ingraining Emuna into our hearts and giving over to the next generation. But it's not just like a circle that every year, year we come back to like say, okay, again, it's the same day, Tesva Benisan. But it's way more than that because it's like a spiral moving up. Every year, we're, you're right, we're in the same place working on the same spiritual idea. 
but we're able to grow higher and higher and reach higher levels. That's precisely what the Rashba says in Chidushe Agados Bachos. With remembering that Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, Nikva b'nafsho iseinu, we learn greater in our nefesh, and our neshamas, Shehu ha-mashgiach, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mashgiach, and there's nothing else, ve'enoid milvadoi. And we always have room to work our nemuna. The Nesivus Shalom says, there is many madregois, be'emuna, blisof. And at the, the more, as we mentioned earlier, the more that a person reaches a higher level of Muna, the more he's considered a bigger tzaddik. With this, we actually answered all our questions. Question number one, why is there this reoccurring theme on Pes- in Pesach about Shmira to safe keep the mitzvah of Pesach? That's because it is fundamental for everything. Just like Habakkuk told us, the Emunah is the shorish, the foundation, the infrastructure for all our Yiddishkeit. And that is is complementary to Shabbos. Shabbos also has that idea. And that's why Shabbos is so crucial. And so is Pesach. Shabbos represents that Hashem created the world. Pesach represents the Emunah, that Hashem is always watching over us and everything is counted for. That's also why Pesach is referred to Shabbos. Because they both have very similar elements of Emunah and it's coming to complement Shabbos. So it's very fitting to refer to Pesach as Shabbos. Our last question was, why is it Shabbos Agadol? It should have been the Yom Agadol on Yud Benisa? No, because there, we want to ensure, and it's imperative. Chazal are telling us the Kesher between Shabbos and Pesach. And one is a prerequisite for the other, because Shabbos is realizing Hashem created the world. And then the next step is Hashem is still with us, watching every move, everything we're doing. And everything's accounted for, En Od Milvadoi with Hashkacha Pratis. I just want to end with two Ma'amalei Chazals that are very important to know and both are very fitting for Leila Seder. Number one, Bereish Yisraba says, Kesheata Shomer Neri, HaKadosh Buch who's telling us when you will safe keep my light, Ani Meshamer Nercha, I will take care of your light. And we'll end off with the Yalkut Shimoini, Parshas Beshalach, this is what he says, that the true galut, the redemption, will come just like I think we had in Mitzrayim. We trust the Kodesh Buchu that will take us out. We scream to Kodesh Buchu and that's, that was the turning point. So to hear the turn, the, so to hear in the future, the Galuyas, the redemptions will come from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Bishut and the merit of our Emuna in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Have a good Shabbos and a good Yom Tov. Thank you for joining us. This is the Prism of Torah. Visit our website prismoftorah.com where you'll find a full archive of hundreds of past every Torah. Subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, And don't forget to share with your friends and family. Sponsorship opportunities are available for all of our episodes. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipment. Produced by Ellie Podcast Productions.